Manjuri is an Indian writer director based in LA. Her debut feature Skater Girl is about a teenage girl who comes of age through skateboarding. It was acquired by Netflix and released last month. She's currently in post production for Disney's Spin that's also slated to release in 2021. With over 12 years of experience in the industry, her journey as a director started with three critically acclaimed short films: I See You, The Corner Table, and The Last Marble. Her films have won awards all over in India, the US, Europe, and Australia at large festivals. She's had the opportunity to work with incredible filmmakers like Christopher Nolan on Dunkirk and The Dark Knight Rises. Patty Jenkins on Wonder Woman as well as A-list Indian filmmakers like Vishal Bhardwaj on Saat Khun Mein. I'm excited to interview Manjuri and I hope you like this real and fabulous conversation. Hi guys and welcome to my next episode of The Shan Show. Very very excited to be interviewing a very old friend of mine Manjuri Makhijani. Hi Manjuri, so good to have you here. I can't tell you how excited I am. Your movie has officially released on Netflix, The Skater Girl. Uh, I have absolutely loved it. I think it's been a hit with anyone that I've spoken to, and you're an internet sensation now. So tell us, firstly, how does it feel? Before I ask you all the other questions I have planned, I have to say it feels really special to be on your show. uh you know it's it's really special to be interviewed by you so this is this is quite a extra special interview that i'm doing but yeah it feels amazing i think the film kind of exceeded our expectations and uh, and we were pleasantly surprised by all the messages pouring in from across the world and that's been super super exciting it feels really good you make so when you're making something for all these years you don't realize um, what it's going to feel like once it's out absolutely and um You know, Manjuri, Skater Girl. I mean, I loved it. I think that it's something which has a message. I'm going to ask you about that as well. As you know, in the next few questions, it I think really touched everyone that watched it. Everyone went home with that warm, fuzzy feeling and wanting to encourage every single person around them. You know, be it friends or family or people they don't know. But I'm going to start by asking you, since we are a network of you know startups and people starting out in their careers. how was it for you starting out in the industry though you do come from a film family but i know it's never always easy so what really made you pursue this career you know i knew pretty early on that i wanted to be uh, a director and uh, even before i knew what a director really does i was kind of you know gravitated towards storytelling and and we would discuss sort of movies uh, after watching them uh, at the theaters so that sort of inclination was always there and then after we graduated in mass media i pretty much got straight to being on the set my dad was like look you know you're not going to film school and wasting all that money first go if you want to learn how to be a director go on set and see if if that's even what you want to do so i pretty much started from uh you know scratch and as an ad learning uh what it is to be uh you know on a film set and and what that sort of craft is all about and, and then yeah and then pretty much uh, started my career as an assistant director and then went off and made some short films yeah actually you really did start from the word go and uh, i think that you do learn best during um your first job or i think all your jobs like i've always said when i did internships i feel learning on the job is the best way Uh, I think yeah. your dad's advice was great. So let me ask you about Skater Girl. Now, where did the inspiration come from? When I watched the movie as well, I was like, "Wow, how did she think of this?" You know. So tell us about that. So you know, I had no idea that skating was a whole scene in India. I mean, I'm based in LA now, and I see skaters every day. And uh, you know, when I discovered sort of the skate scene thriving in India, I was kind of blown away at what the impact of skateboarding was doing across India. You know, we went to uh, Madhya Pradesh and saw what was happening there. Then we went to Delhi and Mumbai, and we interacted with the kids in Kovalam in Kerala. And all of these skate communities started coming through our research, and we realized that you know it is kind of universal. how skateboarding had an impact on all these communities and how it was empowering the children who were there so just this germ idea and concept of you know, what skateboarding was doing was kind of fascinating and i and i thought that you know this could this could make a great movie so then we kind of took off a year and uh, vinati and i just uh, sat and wrote a, wrote um, wrote skater girl we we spent a lot of time in rajasthan actually where the film is set and met um, hundreds of girls just ru- in rural india to be like what is it like uh, what is your sort of daily life like and um, yeah and all of that yeah and you uh, portrayed um, your lead character the girl in your movie 
so well and i think that every person left with a feeling of you know that sense of achievement and that sense of really wanting to see people around them achieve so um like i said earlier you left people with a warm and fuzzy feeling what was the actual message you were looking at people to go home with after this film you know i was just hoping to tell a really simple story and something that was universal and relatable and uh, and i just wanted to just have people in, be inspired after they saw this film i wanted people to connect with it doesn't matter uh, what age they were or which part of the world they were in and uh, just sort of and not just for skaters but for everybody else to kind of connect with at least one of the characters because it's a story about you know four different women across different strata of society and and how they sort of um, connect with each other and and relate to each other so i was hoping that that inspiration comes through and that um that sort of uh, like you said the fuzzy feeling comes through where it's like oh wait a second you know what is what is it that i'm really going after in life and and uh, and just kind of pursuing those dreams a little idealistic of me but yeah but that was that was what i set out to uh ah, and so many different underlying things come out different issues different you know um characters uh was beautiful because i think it all just weaved together um in the end but you did mention vinti who is your sister and i want to bring that up how is it working with uh, your sibling taking a year off writing together she's done such a phenomenal job um on the film yeah. well. yeah yeah she's she's uh, she's also the producer she was the producer from mac productions and she co-wrote the project she was also the second unit director so it was it was really um uh i mean we have a shorthand from from the time we were in jai hind we were you know or actually even before that we would put put up sort of skits for the family and in jai hind we were part of the drama team we would work together so that shorthand sort of just naturally translated on set she knew what i wanted and she would prep it in a way even while writing we would be sort of going back and forth and uh, yeah that year of writing was uh, hardly an off year it was pretty much uh, you know grueling uh, sort of one year of writing and writing an original story because just being inspired by something and then actually making a whole story um uh, is 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 quite quite a thing yeah yeah it's quite an achievement but uh, let's get to skater girl you shot a lot in rajasthan you worked with so many different characters um artists also just building the skate park from scratch what was one of the challenges you faced um you know behind the scenes that we probably haven't heard about when filming skater girl you know like you said like building the skate park was one of the biggest challenges because we realized if we are making a film on social impact how how cool would it be to sort of actually do something on the ground or do something that lives beyond the film yeah. and uh, that's when we decided fairly early on that you know we want to build a skate park in a new community and impact a, impact a new place and uh, we put together a build team uh, 100 ramps from bangalore and holy stoke collective put together an international crew of skate park builders and we were kind of involved heavily in designing it something that's sort of an international level skate park but it's also conducive to filming so it was uh, it was quite a great team effort but we sort of constructed in the middle of the monsoons nothing went per plan and it was a whole feat sort of just constructing a huge monstrous skate park it's about you know 14 and a half thousand square feet and uh, and it was tough challenging conditions in which we built it but but you know the end was always like okay this is going to stay for the people it's not just for the film it's it's going to live live on forever so yeah that was definitely the toughest sort of uh, phase and then of course when we were on set there are a whole different set of challenges that you face uh, to yeah. make things happen yeah but you really left your mark with the film because you that skate park today is being used by so many and it's so yeah. beautiful so um kudos to you for that uh monkey as you know our network is again like i say about smaller businesses people starting out when you started out as a director even though you come from a film family i know people always believe it's easier it's not um i just want to say that before i ask you the question um but was there anything that you did which you'd like to share advice to somebody starting out that helped you you know maybe do this and not that like you said your dad said don't waste money on going to um film school immediately get a job so what's what yeah. would your advice be i think it was uh, really good that you know learning on the job and uh that helps i mean i went to then afi and did the ucla program after uh doing short films and after being on set and then you use a different part of your brain so i think just being 
in the environment or the industry that you want to be part of in some capacity helps you understand. It's just sort of like a sponge you're absorbing what that environment is going to be like. And then taking a sort of step away or a, or a break away to actually do what you want to do. For example, I you know, took a break from assisting for a bit and went off and made a short film. And at the time, people said, oh, you know, you assist for so many more years. Why are you going off and making a short film right now? And I wanted to do that just to test, you know, can I actually direct or is this just sort of a very whimsical thing that I, I'm pursuing? Yeah. And I think making a short film really helped me because then I could say, OK, I'm a director, send it to film festivals. And that got great traction. Of course, it comes with its fair bit of rejection. So I think you have to be open and ready for failure because, you know, you will get selected for X number of festivals, but many more rejections also come with that. Um, but yeah, definitely, I'd say anybody who's sort of pursuing filmmaking, make a short film, send it to festivals. That's a bold step. And I think that rejection is in any industry. So if you're like you said, willing to accept it, you can keep going. Um, another technical question really is how did you discover the members of your team and the members of your cast? Because that can't be easy and you really chose them perfectly. I think that they all seamlessly worked so well together. Um, it was great. And how do you really keep the bond and the relationship between both very strong? So um, wait, what was the first part of the question? How do you how, how do you choose your team and your cast? Yeah. So uh, you know, very organically because I was assisting, I had built relationships over the years, and you know, uh, it's very important to sort of uh, relationships are key in in any industry. And I think building off those relationships, like my costume designer, for example, knew me from the time when I was an assistant. So he came on and did my short film, The Corner Table, and then that relationship translated into my first feature. Same with Salim Suleiman, you know, they did The Corner Table and we had that lovely working relationship and that just translated into, into the feature. So I think, you know, building those relationships and those, um, uh, that working shorthand is, is so important. And a lot of them just organically get aligned with the vision. So we spent a lot of time uh, uh, putting the team together, even the cast, the casting process. I mean, no casting director wanted to touch this film because they were like, wait a second, you need um, skaters, you need actors, you need fresh faces, and uh, you uh, have, a, you know, a very limited budget. So most of them were like, sorry, we can't do it. So, you know, there, there are these challenges you face. And I remember Vinati saying, look, we know exactly what we want. I'm going to take on uh, doing casting here. And then fortunately, we got Sanjeev Moria from Delhi, who also got the vision of the film. And he's like, yep, I see this. And uh, I'm going to, you know, join hands and collaborate on this. And Vinati and Sanjeev did the casting over months. And it was a very non-traditional approach, actually. We didn't sort of just do a casting call. Oh. Uh, we did uh, casting workshops across sort of uh, NGOs, government schools, skate communities, and uh, just to see, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a skater or a non-skater, to see who are these people who really can embody these characters we've written. And um, yeah, and, and, and then we found all pretty much uh, fresh faces. They had to train in acting, had to train in skating. It was a five-month sort of artist residency that, that happened to, um, yeah, where they were training in skating and, and in acting. So it was quite, quite an amazing that's process yes because each character i mean ankush is of course the, the yeah. overall favorite yeah everyone's favorite but i think each character including the girl's parents you know everyone was so well cast it was um, something that you know when you see the film i that's what i was thinking how well these characters have come together and they've been played so kudos to vinti and sanjeev as well for choosing them right so manjuri i want to ask you what makes a great film for you uh, you know, any any qualities that you think that in a film, which are like the, the real ingredients, which are like, okay, this film will be a hit. You know, it's very hard to predict sort of the fate of a film. You never know uh, how the audience is going to receive it, what the pulse will be at the time it's releasing. But I think when you're watching it, at least for me, when I'm the audience, something that just sort of transports you into another world or moves you or makes you think or makes you question or makes you you know, able to relate to something for me that that has done, that has done its job, you know, um, in the recent times, there was a, a beautiful film, Kapurnam, and uh, Nadine Labaki's, um, uh, uh, you know, she's, uh, Nadine Labaki is the director for Kapurnam, and, uh, uh, and this film called Mustang, and both these films did such a great job at capturing very natural performances, you know, capturing 
uh, children and uh, and and the sort of um, uh, this young spirit of these girls in Mustang. So I think it's very important to sort of let let that naturalness come through and where you're just feeling like you're you're a voyeur in somebody's journey. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it. Um, okay, tell me, what role have film festivals played in your life? Because like you said, just go on, release your film, send it to the festival. What's that experience been like for you? I think film festivals are just amazing, uh, especially for new filmmakers. Yeah. They give you that prestige and they validate your work and uh, you get noticed from these places. So when I sent my short films and they went around to festivals, uh, you know, firstly, it's a great place to network. I mean, the, the, the hustle and bustle and the energy of festivals, oh, I just thrive on it. I love the business side of things. I love that instant audience interaction. So those festivals play a great role in sort of uh, recognizing your talent and, and uh, sort of, you know, also for agencies and managers and all to track you and be like, oh, this is a new filmmaker on the block. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to be discovered. I think that's a great way to yeah. be discovered. Uh, so Manjri, talking about family, what has been your dad's influence on your movie making style? I know you named your company after him as well. And of course, the family name. But what was really his influence um, on your movie making? You know, it was so subtle. He never sort of sat us down and gave us any kind of advice or anything. But just watching um, sort of his journey and his trajectory has been amazing because he's, you know, we've seen him sort of be completely busy and, and, and doing nonstop work, traveling abroad as we were kids and traveling for like doing a couple of shifts a day to, uh, to work sort of even slowing down. So I think through like his highs and lows, he was always consistent with how he was in the industry. And I think that really taught me that doesn't matter whether you're, you know, successful one day, you're going to be down the other day and come back up the other day. It's very important to sort of be consistent through that phase. Um, but yeah, he, he had very early on told me when we would dissect films that, you know, you think like a director. And I was like, oh, wait, what does a director think like? And this was probably still when I was in school. So uh, and he never told me once that, oh, it's going to be tough as a female filmmaker, you know because it's, it's a male dominated industry. And I think that was the best thing um, because had I sort of known getting into it that, oh, it's gonna be different, uh, I, would have, I would have had an unconscious bias about it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that, I did think of that to be one of the questions I wanted to ask you, but I was like, no, Manji doesn't think that way. So uh, yeah. that will be one, uh, one topic that I will actually bring up. Now to just ask you my last few questions about the business side of doing, you know, making a movie because it, it isn't easy. Um, you know, you don't live in India. How did you manage this feat of actually building the skate park, coordinating a team? Um, what was the process for you? You know, it wasn't any different uh, even when I was sort of living in India. I still travel back and forth between India and uh, LA. And um, and yeah, so that process wasn't any different because I'm here because I was spending a lot of time on the ground. We were part of uh, the construction every day from the first day. Uh, Vinati, myself, Emmanuel, who's also the producer. So we were there on ground. Uh, you know, we were seeing, all right, one concrete truck is coming in. All right, these are the stones that are coming in. Like we were so involved in the day to day of building the skate park, getting the permissions. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you just kind of like do a deep dive and, and get really get into the process. And I think Vinati and I are both so detail oriented that uh, we, we kind of had our hands uh, in, in everything. And um, yeah, it was like wearing a um, producer's hat one day, wearing a writer's hat one day and, uh, and then finally wearing the director's hat. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask you my next question, which is where does the director's role stop? You have overseen it all. You've been a part of every part of the film. It's like your baby, you know, while yeah. shooting and putting it together. So uh, you've played many roles. How did you kind of manage that? You know, I think that sort of, the, like I said, the business side of it comes really naturally to me because uh, I had also started off in production. And uh, uh, so being a writer, director, producer kind of was a hand in hand. In fact, uh, I, I feel that if I'm, if I'm just sort of hired as a director, it would be so hard for me to compartmentalize because I'm automatically thinking about, you know, all right, how do we make this uh, more efficient for production as well? So yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I think it just sort of comes naturally sort of going in from uh, uh, the producer's role to, to the directors. But, um, but yeah, when I'm on set, then you're completely got blinders on and you're sort of protecting and guarding your vision, getting what you want, 
from every take, from every shot. So I think that is purely the time when um, I'm just just the director. If somebody is starting out uh, and they want to have a game plan, when you were a director, when you were starting out with either the corner table or the last marble or skater girl, um, did you have a game plan? Do you go and say Manjuri is going to do this first, and then this will be, uh, you know, a, a super hit film? No, I don't think there's a game plan in that sense, but it's definitely very process driven. Um, you know, I break down the script completely, or even while writing it, you know, there are uh, certain beat sheets you write and there's, there's such a structured process on doing every part of the job, whether it's in the writing phase or whether it's in the production phase, everything is broken down in detail, sort of department wise, and same with sort of post production and then Again, a, such a detailed process comes in when you're planning the marketing and the release. So I think um, uh, I think just sort of having patience is one thing that Skater Girl has taught me and having patience through the whole thing. But uh, I definitely felt that uh, film festivals are one of the big things that I had in plan for the short films. Yeah. That if I was making these short films, these were purely for uh, sending it out to festivals. Uh, you almost never make any money on short films. It's completely for the prestige and for traveling with the films and interacting with your audience and, and getting discovered, like you said, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, there's there's no like particular sort of formula for for making making a hit film. I think to make a good film, you just need to have a good process in place and be detailed oriented and as structured as you can. Yeah. OK, my last question, I know we're running out of time, is that you do have a new movie releasing, which is um, Spin. Tell us yeah. what's next for Manjuri. Apart from Spin, tell us a little bit about that. What else is next for Manjuri? Where do you see yourself in the next few years? So uh, Spin Spin is releasing on August 13. And uh, that was an amazing, amazing film because we shot it during the pandemic. Again, it felt so beautiful to have a lovely cast and crew, you know, make it possible. It became like a big extended family, just like Skater Girl. It yeah. was like one big family and we everybody still keeps in touch. Uh, and that's a, that's a film about a, a, a 15 year old Indian American who comes of age uh, through music. And, uh, and it's Disney's first Indian American protagonist story. So that's, that's a really uh -huh. uh, very interesting uh, thing for me to bring sort of our culture into the mainstream here. And uh, and after that, we're doing also a documentary called Skate Village or Skate Basti, which uh, sort of uh, documents the impact skateboarding has had in the Desert Dolphin Skate Park and the children around there and tracking their journey. Because, you know, now we have uh, kids from there who are representing uh, Rajasthan and the national championship. So, so yeah, it's yeah. Some, some exciting stuff in the pipeline. Kudos to you, Manjuri. That's going to be huge. And I can't wait to see that documentary to see the impact your park is at. The last question I have for you, which I ask every guest, how has networking helped you and played a role in your career journey? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very big on, you know, I'm very big on um, positivity while networking. So what's it been like for you? I think, uh, you know, like I said, relationships are everything. And for me, networking is all about uh, relationships and building them and, uh, and building genuine relationships, not just you know, not just where you're going to a place, handing your business card and, and sort of, uh, you know, making it very transactional. It has to be personal. It has to be uh, it has to be meaningful. And I think that has uh, that has been a testament to my work. Like I said, you know, people who worked in my short films or people that have known me from my days of assisting are now sort of those relationships are translating into working on my features. So, yeah, I think I think I thrive on networking. I think I thrive on connecting with people and. Uh, and just uh, and just learning about them. The curious mind doesn't stop. <laughs> Absolutely. That makes me so happy. I wish you all the best, Manjuri. Thank you so much for being on my show today. Thank you, Shan. Thank you for having me. It was so fun.